Hey, what's up? This is Sarah, the Skeptical Witch. Today I am changing up my altar space for the summer season, so I thought that I would take you along with me. So welcome back to my channel, or welcome if this is your first time here. Uh, I just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. Uh, your support means the world to me and I am really glad that you have decided to accompany me as I start this journey onto YouTube. I hope everyone had a really lovely summer solstice, whatever you were doing for that. I know I had a really great time. I got to go to the cottage with my parents uh, and my sister and her boyfriend. That was really fun. Um, yeah, it was my sister's birthday as well as Father's Day weekend, so we had a really fun time celebrating that there at the cottage, um, just surrounded by a good company, spending lots of time in nature, got to spend lots of time out on the water, so that was really nice, doing some boating and some swimming. Um, we had a fire the night of the solstice, so that was really cool. Um, I also planted a herb garden that weekend, so that was really cool. That was a nice way to just kind of connect with the earth a little um, for this uh, summer season. I've never successfully planted herbs before, so this is <laughs> this is exciting. Hopefully, hopefully they turn out. We'll see. I didn't actually get to do any ritual or anything like that for the solstice. Uh, I wasn't really planning on it because I knew I was going to be at the cottage with family, so it was really more just about spending time outside, soaking up the sun, uh, taking in as much of the like beautiful scenery and the natural world as possible, and really kind of attuning myself with that. So that was that was really my ritual in a way. Um, it wasn't anything big or fancy. Um, yeah. But I'm back at home now, and usually I would change up my altar before the Sabbath. Uh, usually I like to do it like about a week in advance, but I didn't get to do it this time um, just because I was busy with school stuff and also being at the cottage and everything. So I have decided to change it up now and I thought that I would take you along with me as I do so you can kind of see my process of taking it down and putting it back up. Um, I also personally really love watching altar tour videos, <laughs> so I guess because I'm kind of nosy, I like to see what people keep on their altars and what, what's in their sacred space and everything, so I thought it would be fun to kind of make one of my own. So this is what my altar looks like right now. This is just my spring altar. It's a bit messy, it definitely needs to be cleaned. Um, I don't know how much I'll change it exactly. I never really know what I'm going to do until it's done and on the altar. Um, so I'm not sure. We'll see. It might change a lot. It might not change very much at all. This is what the final altar looks like. So you might notice that there are some kind of Wiccan elements on the altar. Um, I'm not a Wiccan. I just, uh, the first like altar that I ever had was based on the Wiccan model because I didn't really quite know what to do 
besides that at the time. Um, that's kind of like the resources that I had for creating an altar were all very Wiccan. So I did retain some of those elements, um, like having a side for the goddess energy, which is here. I have like a little, um, just like a little goddess figurine who is pretty like Wiccan in nature, as well as my cauldron has the triple moon, uh, triple goddess symbol on it there. Um, and then I have the god side over here. Um, so that's a very, I guess, loose way of interpreting my altar at the minute. It does kind of maintain that, that dualism, those two sides. Um, but it means a lot more to me, and I will kind of get into that uh, because since having that original Wiccan kind of altar, I have definitely moved beyond that and incorporated a lot of my own um, things that really resonate with me that go beyond that like basic model. Over here on this side of the altar, I have my just like peace and positivity candle, um, as well as some mala beads that are wrapped around it. These were given to me by my uncle, who is an avid meditator as well as a Buddhist. So those are really special to me. Um, I have a stia, uh, an owl that's quite heavy. Um, I believe this was just picked up at a thrift shop. I think my mom found it at uh, just like a thrift shop. Um, owls are really special to me and really important to me because they were um, one of my grandmother's favorite uh, favorite creatures and uh, she she really loved owls she had a lot of owls on a lot of her belongings and it was just it's just um, something that I feel like connects me to her um, and since she passed away um, the owl has kind of become something that my mother and I have both used to to symbolize her and to represent her memory um, underneath that I just have some books uh, a couple are just like the two in the middle here are just like art books that I draw in occasionally. The, this one's pretty full. This one I'm still working on. Below it is my ritual notebook. So this is where I write down uh, rituals that I want to kind of have some idea of what I'm doing beforehand. So if I'm doing like a big fancy ritual with a lot of, a lot of bells and whistles, a lot of like different elements to it, I will write it down in that book. Um, and then journal about it in there after about how it went so that I can kind of remember how, um, how it impacted me and how it made me feel. Um, and then the one on top is just a book of poetry by Percy by Shelley, who is one of the romantics. And I am a big fan of the romantics. Um, I think their poetry has impacted me a lot uh, in my life in how I approach nature and just like the idea of the imagination. Um, and it influenced contemporary paganism a lot, like romantic poetry did. So I think it's, it's pretty important to, to me and my spirituality. Over here, I have some amethyst, which is one of my favorite crystals. Um, and then beside it, that is a uh, crystal rose that my partner gifted me on, I think it was our first anniversary together, either our first or our second, I'm not sure. Um, the first year that we were dating, I think. Um, it's really beautiful and really breakable, so I'm always really scared when I, every time I move my altar around and have to have to move that because I'm terrified of breaking it. And then I just got some flowers as well to celebrate the season. Um, I usually buy myself flowers, treat myself to, to flowers um, for the Sabbath and for the altar change. They're sitting underneath uh, a box of memories, I guess is what I'd call it. It's just a box that I keep um, everything that's special to me that can, can fit in it, I guess. Um, so just like things that remind me of certain people or certain times in my life, certain events. So I have like concert tickets in there as well as just like little trinkets that remind me of like the first time I met someone, for example, um, just things that are really important to me like that. So that, that box is, is pretty full with all that. I won't open it because it's kind of hard to get to. And um, yeah, there's just a lot of kind of weird stuff in there, <laughs> but it's, it's all very special to me. Um, 
and then here I just have a little glass vial of uh, sea glass and then some sunflower seeds as well. Um, behind that I have a pile of mica back there, which um, I don't know if mica like cla is classified as a crystal. I don't know if it counts as a crystal. It's a mineral. Um, that grows, grows, but <laughs> appears um, uh, in in plenty behind my parents' house, like in their backyard, um, where I grew up as a kid. So I spend a lot of time collecting that when I was a kid. So um, it's it's associated with a lot of fond memories. And this is a beautiful bowl that my parents brought back for me from Costa Rica when they went there a little while ago. Um, so inside of that, I am keeping some shells and some coral that they also brought back from Costa Rica, um, as well as there's some sand in there, some red sand that I collected when we were in PEI, uh, whew, man, like three, four, five, a while ago, a few years ago. I can't remember exactly how long, but yeah, that's what I keep in there. It's kind of... Um, very summery, I think. It, it definitely suits the season. Um, this right here is a massive chunk of sea glass that I also found in PEI that I just really love. Um, I think it's really cool just because I've never seen like a piece of sea glass that big. Um, so that's that's pretty special to me. And then in this little cute little elephant box here, I'm going to try to open it without burning myself on these candles. So this is just a little like coffin, little graveyard box for uh, a D and D mini that I had that my partner painted for me. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, D and D Dungeons and Dra Dragons. Sorry for for anyone who doesn't know. Um, it's just like a dice tabletop role playing game that I'm very into. Um, yeah, so this is one of my favorite characters uh, that I played for like a year and a half, I think, named Gail. She was a storm sorceress cleric, um, took her all the way to level 20. And yeah, uh, fortunately, when we moved uh, to Scotland, I think it was, we took her and she did not survive the trip. So this is just a little, little graveyard for <laughs> my favorite character there. And then back here, this is just a candle that I got from a thrift shop a little while ago. Um, I just thought it was really cute and very like summery. So this candle I think I will burn between now and probably Maven. Um, I think it just kind of suits um, suits the like summer to end of summer kind of look. Um, and then behind it is bark from a tree. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's like hard moving around here with all the candles burning. I probably should have blown them out before I started this, but oh well. Um, yeah, so that's just some bark from a tree that I got when I was on a walk and I thought it was really cool. And this guy here is an incense burner that my friend gave to me years and years ago. Like I've had this forever. Um, I really like it. I thought it was really cool. Um, at one point I made him like a little paper guitar because I thought it looked like he was playing guitar. Um, so he's my little like trained guy who sits there. Um, he is on my altar for the light half of the year um, because he also reminds me of the green man and um, I also have a green man incense burner here as well. Uh, the green man is like a pretty important figure to me, um, during the light half of the year, I have like pretty much this whole side of the altar is dedicated to the green man, um, because he symbolizes that idea of like rebirth, um, and growth and just, um, kind of embodies that idea of the earth coming back for, to life for me. So he, um, he's definitely an archetype that I really like working with, um, and also just like an aesthetic that I really love. Um, yeah, so I, I quite enjoy that. 
Beside the Green Man is a crystal that I could not tell you the name of. I knew at one point, but I don't remember now. Um, I'm not actually someone who believes in the energetic, like, healing powers of crystals, so I don't really pay that much attention to what they're called or, like, what they supposedly mean. Um, I buy them more based on aesthetic and um, just kind of what I associate them with. So this one reminds me of, like, summer and the sun and just kind of like that. I, I like the rusty color of it um, makes me think of a sunset so that's why I bought that and that's why it's on my summer altar and um, this little piece of wood here I just use for holding tarot cards so I have one there and one on the other side of the altar as well and then uh, I have a couple more that I put at very, um, various places of the altar um, depending on how many cards I pull so they just have like a little slit in them that holds the cards um, yeah, so it's just like daily draws or uh, whatever cards um, I'm working with at the moment I will put there. Um, and then moving on here, this is really cool. It's one of my favorite things on my altar. It doesn't look like much, but it is actually a piece of the Berlin Wall, which is pretty sweet. My dad gave me that for my birthday uh, last year, this year, my, my previous birthday, my last birthday. Um, yeah, so I was really excited about that. I think that's really, really cool that he has that. So that, that sits on my altar there. Um, this little turtle guy is a just like a little crystal turtle that I've had ever since I was like a tiny little kid. Um, that also just symbolizes my dad for me because he um, loves turtles. They're one of his favorite animals. He used to collect turtles a lot when he was a little kid. So I just keep that there as a reminder of him. Um, and then this little otter pin, I just keep there because I love otters. <laughs> I don't, like, use the idea of spirit animals in my practice so much, um, but I, I just love otters, so I don't know. I, I have a special connection with otters. Um, this crystal I do know the name of. It's a uh, fool's gold or pyrite, and that just represents the sun for me. So this is like my sun side of the altar. Um, I also have some paintings there that I will go into a bit later. But yeah, this is kind of like my god or my like sun side of the altar. Um, although that that does kind of change up depending on uh, the context in which I'm using it. And this is one of the first pieces that I ever got for my altar. This is just a little um, statue of Dionysus, the great god, um, but as the green man. So he's sometimes associated with the green man um, archetype. So that's what this is. I got this in Scotland just at a gift shop um, for one of, um, I think it was like a cathedral that I went to, like a really ancient cathedral in St. Andrews. Um, yeah, so Dionysus, I've always had a really special connection with, um, even before I, like, became a pagan or <laughs> really got interested in gods at all or, like, god and goddess archetypes, um, in any way. Um, so Dionysus is the god of, like, drunkenness, revelry, wine, ecstasy. He's, like, he's the party god. Um, but he's also the god of madness and, like, chaos. He has, uh, definitely has those elements to him. My interest in Dionysus actually started in, uh, I think my second, one of my second year philosophy classes when I read, uh, Nietzsche's The Birth of Tragedy. Um, so in this, Nietzsche talks about how Greek art, Greek, uh, tragedy, which he sees as being kind of the height of art, um, it needs both uh, elements of the Apollonian, Apol wow, I can never say that word, Apollonian <laughs> and Dionysian as well. It needs like a balance of the two. So Apollo, uh, who is also a great god, uh, would represent kind of this idea of like aesthetic and beauty and order, whereas Dionysus is like the chaotic and like the ecstasy and the passion and um, uh, like kind of the chaos and this idea of like having depth in artwork. Um, so in, in The Birth of Tragedy, Nietzsche wrote about how uh, good art basically needs both sides, needs the 
um, the aesthetic and the beautiful and the orderly, as well as the, the chaotic and the passionate and everything. Um, so that's that was something that I really took to heart at the time, not only for life or for art, but for um, kind of my life in general. So that's, that's just um, a reason why I guess Dionysus has always been important to me. And I also, I do have a, um, oh, that's, yeah, my Apollo tattoo on that side. Um, and my Dionysus tattoo on that side. Um, yeah, that's because of the, the birth of tragedy, basically. So, uh, and Dionysus is my favorite of, of the two, of course. And then on both sides of the altar, I have these um, black and white crystals, and they just kind of represent um, the balance of light and dark and having, again, this balance between order and chaos and, um, yeah, just, uh, just maintaining that balance is what those crystals represent to me. Here I have some antlers as well, uh, partially because they do represent the like archetype of the horned god to me, um, but they also represent the archetype of Artemis, the huntress. So there's kind of the masculine and the feminine, the, the god and the goddess in, in those. Um, they're both archetypes that I really love and that I work with, especially in the summer. I got some mushrooms here because I love mushrooms and I consider myself a little bit of a psychonaut. So that's just a representation of that and of this, you know, sense of altered states of consciousness and, um, yeah, just a, a reminder that it is possible and sometimes very helpful to go beyond the ordinary and go beyond our everyday mindset. On the goddess side here, um, I do have this goddess figure. Um, she's very nondescript. It's not any particular goddess. Um, and I guess this is because I work with many goddesses, depending on the time of year and depending on um, just what I'm working on personally. So whereas the god for me stays kind of the same all the time, like Dionysus is pretty much the main god that I work with and then the green man, um, those are the two archetypes that I work with the most when it comes to gods. Uh, but with goddesses, uh, for me, it's a lot more fluid and interchangeable. Um, and I work with a lot of different ones. Um, like, I think Hecate is probably the main one, but she's kind of more uh, the dark side of the year. I'll work with her more starting in the fall. During the summer, it really depends. Um, I've been drawn to Hestia um, at times. Also Baba Yaga, I love working with Baba Yaga as, as part of the goddess, like crone archetype. Um, and like I mentioned, Artemis with the, the horns there. Um, but like I mentioned in my previous videos, I'm not a polytheist. I don't actually believe in the literal existence of uh, deities, so I just work with them as archetypes and um, like metaphors for the earth. So this, I, the idea of the goddess for me will really change um, depending on uh, depending on the context. Next to the goddess figure, I have this crystal. I can't remember what it's called, um, but this just like fits fits onto it here somehow. Like that, yeah, yeah. So this crystal just represents the moon for me. Um, I don't know what it like means in terms of like crystal healing or um, any of that, like what energies it supposedly has. Um, it just represents the moon for me because of its shape um, and because I think it's beautiful. So I will open and close that crystal depending on the phase of the moon. And then here, this is just like a little little owl charm uh, that I think is made out of sunstone um, that I keep on my altar just uh, again as like a reminder of my grandmother and my mother. Um, I think owls for me now just kind of symbolize both of them and uh, that that line of women on, on that side of the family. And then beside it is a um, also a uh, pendant that my grandmother got me a long time ago when she went to Venice. 
So that I just keep on my altar when I'm not wearing it. Um, I do wear it a lot, especially around October, um, when I, which is when her birthday was. So in the month of October, which is also, of course, uh, Samhain, um, I kind of work with that ancestral energy. So I'll, I'll wear it at that time of the year. And then this crystal here, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Sorry. I just like oddly shaped crystals. I, I really like, um, polished ones are nice, but I like weird kind of looking ones with like jagged <laughs> weird edges and all sorts of bits like popping out and stuff. So this one I was really drawn to and I picked it up um, and I like the color of it as well, but couldn't tell you what it is. And now just getting into the candles on the altar. Um, all of these candles, the main ones, the tall ones, are pretty symbolic uh, for me. So starting with the ones at the back, um, these three, the two white and the pink, I kind of see as going together. Um, so the two white candles for me represent duality and various uh, dualistic kind of ways of thinking that we have. Um, I think yeah, in our society for sure we tend to think in terms of binaries right so like light or dark or order or chaos or uh, creation or destruction um, or god or goddess you know male female all of these like binaries that we create and um, that are often necessary for thinking things through in, in a way so I also like working with these binaries sometimes. I think it's helpful. They're helpful to think through, I think. It, binaries are helpful, um, helpful for working through things. So often these two candles will represent the, uh, the god and the goddess for me on each side there. Um, sorry, and that will be uh, kind of like that binary in that way. But then the center candle is really important to me, the one in the middle, the pink one, because that represents this idea of uh, unity or wholeness to me, um, and the idea that these binaries, these kind of dualities that we have are always false. You know, they're never real. There are always some things that we kind of make up and create, and um, I don't know. I'm, I am a pantheist, so in the end, I do believe that everything is one and that um, there really is only only unity. So I am also a monist rather than a dualist, so I don't believe in a separation between mind and matter or spirit and matter. Um, so the center candle represents that idea of the, the whole and of everything kind of coming together as one, um, as well as just a reminder that it's never just as simple as one or the other like it's never just as simple as black and white there's always you know <laughs> there's always something that will come in and complicate that um it's never just one or the other right so that's that's what those candles represent to me um and the holders for them the one in the middle is from a thrift shop my mom got that for me at a thrift shop which i really love um, and the ones on either side are actually, they were made by my grandfather, so my, by my mom's, uh, my mom's dad, who passed away when I was uh, two years old, so I never really got to meet him, but he was an engineer as well as a metal worker, and he made these candle holders, which is absolutely amazing. And then the red candles on either side of the altar, like the far sides, uh, so this candle and this one. They just represent the sun and the moon to me for the most part. Um, so this is the moon candle and this is my sun candle. Um, and the candles and the holders both came from a thrift shop. Um, yeah, so the candles are like a little beat up. Their, their exterior is kind of chipping off a little bit. That's fine. Yeah, so they, they represent the sun and the moon to me. And then this candle in the middle, um, which is made out of wood, um, and I've kind of put it in this glass bowl with a bunch of crystals around it, um, as well as moss around it. Um, so I put crystals, moss, as well as rocks that I found, some pieces of mica. Um, this candle represents the earth to me and the season. So I have the, the moon and the sun on either side and then the earth candle in the middle. Um, and this one, whatever is surrounding this candle, 
will change up with the seasons. So this is my kind of summer, spring um, candle. So moving on to the wall above my altar, uh, in the middle is just a little wreath that I need to continue working on. Um, here is a painting that I don't know who the artist is, I can't make out the signature, um, but this was hanging at my grandmother's place, so after she passed away I inherited it and I just thought it would look really nice on the sun side of my altar. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful watercolor painting um, that is by the amazing Caitlin Page. Um, so she is a really phenomenal artist. I will leave her Etsy link below because you should definitely check her out. Her work is amazing. Um, and this piece just really spoke to me, so I had to get it. I think it like reminds me of um, my inner tiefling in a way, <laughs> as well as just the bird on her shoulder. Um, it looks kind of like it could be uh, a little nightingale, and I love nightingales. Um, I have one tattooed on my shoulder, along with uh, words from John Keats's poem, Ode to a Nightingale. And then just up above here, Hey, what's up? <laughs> this is my mirror. So I will just, um, I found this at a thrift shop a little while ago, or maybe my mom did, I'm not sure. But I thought it was cool. It's just like a star, moon, and sun mirror. And I'll use that in ritual sometimes uh, when I want to incorporate a mirror. And on this side, this is a uh, moon tarot card painting that was done by Madison Ross. She is also a absolutely phenomenal artist, um, so I'll also leave her Etsy down below as well. Uh, again, I would highly recommend checking her out, especially if you like tarot. She does a whole bunch of tarot uh, pictures, many of which I have up here <laughs> because I, um, yeah, I thought they were really cool. Um, she actually gave me this moon one for my birthday, um, and then when she gave me that, I decided that I absolutely had to have the sun one for the other side, because, um, yeah, they're just, they're just really cool. Just very detailed, and, yeah. And then moving up, this is another one by Caitlin Page, um, a cat one. <laughs> this one actually looks like, uh, my first ever cat, Tiger Lily. I think we got her when I was like seven or eight. I was pretty young. Um, so she she reminds me of her, uh, this kitty. It looks very similar to Tiger Lily. So I uh, had to have that and have it above my altar. Um, also, there's little, little shroomy guys on her and some keys, which um, when I was working with Hecate a lot, um, keys were a pretty important symbol for me. And then I have more tarot card pictures up here. So this one's the Fool, which I also really love. And then we have the Magician here. Again, very cool. Very cool. And then up top is a Green Man plaque. So this was given to me by a friend. Uh, which I really, really love. It's one of my favorite things that I have um, because I, as I said, I, I really like the Green Man. I really like working with the Green Man archetype and energy. So um, it's only natural that I should have a Green Man atop my altar. So yeah, that is my summer altar. Alright, so that pretty much concludes this altar tour. Thank you so much for joining me on this and accompanying me while I switched it up from spring to summer. Uh, if you did enjoy this video and would like to see more of this kind of content from me or really anything to do with witchcraft, especially skeptical witchcraft, um, anything like that, uh, please give it a like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, thanks so much and happy summer, witches!